All right then, gang. So now I want to shift focus to form fields. And Chakra UI provides us with a ton of different form fields like inputs, radio buttons, text areas, checkboxes, toggle switches, you name it. So in this lesson, we're just going to go through a few of the different input types and see what they look like and how they behave. Okay, so I'm going to make our form inside the create component right here. This is where a user might create a new task. Now, there's not going to be any functionality with this form. I just want to go over these different UI components we can use from Chakra. So what I'm going to do is delete this div first, and we're going to have a box surround everything here. So let's click on this to import it. Now, inside this box is where our form is going to be, but let's also give this a max width property equal to 480 pixels. Otherwise, the form is going to span the entire width of the page. All right, so inside this box, we need our form. Now, I'm going to use the form component, which is built in to React Router DOM because Chakra UI, as of yet, doesn't have an actual form component. It has components for the different things inside forms, but not a form component. So I'm going to use the one from the React Router DOM, which comes with some added functionality so we can kind of assess what's been input to the form when a user submits it. So inside this form, I want to output some different fields. Now, each field generally that we create inside a form when we're using Chakra UI might go inside a form control component. And basically, that contains then a label for the form input, um, an input field or some other kind of field for the form, maybe some helper text, that kind of thing. So let's create our first form control component. Click on that to import it. And inside here, let's do an input, which is for text. But before we do that, let's do a label. So we'll do form label, click on that to import it. And that's going to say task name. And then below that, let's do an input component. And the type is going to be equal to text. So just like regular HTML tags, we use a type and also a name prop. So the name prop is going to be title, and we're going to use that later on to grab the value from this import after a user submits the form. So that's all there is to it. Dead simple. We have a form label component and an input uh, component for text. Next, let's do a form helper component. So form helper is some text that goes below the input. You can have it above the input if you want, but this is going below the input. So I'll say enter a descriptive task name. Okay, so let's preview this so far. If I go to create over here, new task. Okay, input is not defined. We've not imported that. Let's do that. Input. And also we need to get the form. Yeah, form helper we need. Save that and preview again over here. Uh, refresh. And we still don't get anything so is something wrong let me just inspect over here to see if we have some kind of error the requested module blah -dee, blah -dee, blah form helper oh sorry it should be form helper text my bad i got that component wrong form helper text save that and if we refresh now yeah that works okay so now we can see we have this control this form control we have a label we have the input itself, and we have some kind of descriptive text, which is the form helper text. All right. So we can also make a particular field required, and we can do that by coming to the form control and then adding on a prop, which is is required. And when we do that, it's going to style it a little bit differently to add this red asterisk right here. Awesome. Now, I also want to apply a margin bottom to each form control. So we'll say margin bottom is going to be 40 pixels, like so. All right, so let's do another form control. So let's come down here, say form control again. I'm going to click on that. And inside here, I want another form label. So let's do that. And the label this time is going to say task description. And below that, I want a text area. So we can use a text area component. All right, so now we don't need the closing tag. It's self-closing. Now for the text area, we can have different props. I'm going to have a placeholder prop, which is equal to enter a detailed 
description for the task, dot, dot, dot. Cannot spell at the minute. All right, and then also we'll give this a name prop, which is going to be description. Save that and let's preview. All right, so text area is not defined. You really need to make sure you're importing all of these things, unlike me, text area. Um, save that, refresh, and still not defined. Text area, and okay, yeah. Schoolboy error again, spelt it incorrectly. Refresh over here. Okay, so that works. Now we can see the text area, cool. Let's do one more and let's do a checkbox. So down here, form control again, and inside here. This time, I want to have a checkbox on the left and then the label on the right. So let's do the checkbox component first of all. And again, it's self-closing. We don't need a closing tag. So for this one, we need a name prop. So the name is going to be equal to is priority. So the idea being, if this is a priority task, you just give it a check. And then we're also going to give this a size equal to large, just to make it a little bit bigger. Now, after that, we're going to have a form label. And the form label is going to say, make this a priority task. And then let's also give this a bit of margin. So I'm going to say the margin left is 10 pixels. All right, so if I save this now and preview, we need to import checkbox up here. Save that. Okay, so now we can see we have this checkbox and we have the label, it doesn't look great. So what I'm gonna do is actually set the display of this form control to be flex. So we can do that. We can use a style prop, display is equal to flex. And then also we can say align items to the center so that vertically, the kind of central, and then let's also give this whole form control a margin bottom like the others of 40 pixels. We need to apply that as well to this one to give it some breathing room. Save it. And that looks a little bit better, doesn't it? What I'm going to do is say that the margin bottom of this label is equal to zero to strip it away because I think we have some uh, margin at the bottom of this by default. Okay, so that looks pretty good. We can give a color scheme to these inputs as well, these checkboxes rather. So what I could do is say the color scheme is purple to match the rest of our website. So if I save that, we can see now this is a purple checkbox, which is pretty awesome, right? All right, so now we just need a submit button at the bottom. So let's do a button component. Now the text is gonna be submit and we need to import that up here as well. Now, if I was to press that button at the minute, it wouldn't actually submit the form and I can demo that. If I click on the button, normally when you submit a form, it refreshes the page and it's not doing that. And the reason it's not doing it is because we need to specify that this button is a submit button. So I can say type is equal to submit. So if I save that, now if I try this out and submit it, it's gonna refresh the page and we can see these things right here as parameters up in the URL, okay? Now then, these are the different components. What I'm gonna do now is actually create an action, which is something from React Router DOM, so that when the form is submitted, we can see the different things that have been input. So let me come down to the bottom and I'm gonna create an action function. Now I'm just gonna paste this in from my repo because the focus of this lecture shouldn't be on actions or anything like that. If you wanna learn about that, check out the React Router DOM course. So we have a function called create action, which is asynchronous. It takes in the request object. So when we submit this form, which comes from React Router DOM, it's gonna eventually fire this function and pass in a request object. And from that request object, we can get the form data. And that form data is down here. We're just creating a constant called task. And for the title, we say data, which is this stuff right here, dot get the title and the description and is priority. And this is gonna be a Boolean. If we have a value for priority, if it's checked, it's gonna be true. If we don't, then it's going to be false. And then we're just logging that to the console. We need to register this particular um, action with this form and also with this route. So the first thing we need to do is come up here and say this has a method equal to post. And then also we need to say the action is equal to forward slash 
create. Now, if I go to the app component, I can register that action for this route. So I can say action is equal to, and what was the name of the function we created down here? Create action. So create action. Click on that to import it right here. And I'm going to save it. And hopefully this should work. If I open up the console and let's refresh because we're getting errors. All right. So if I type in a task name and then check this, submit, you can see right here, we do get an error because redirect is not defined. We'll sort that out in a second, but at least we're logging this to the console. All right. And that works. So let's import redirect. So that's this thing right here at the bottom. If I scroll down, you see we have a redirect and that comes from React Router DOM. So let's import that right here, redirect, like so. So that hopefully once we log that to the console, we redirect the user to the homepage. I'm gonna refresh and try this again. This time I'm not gonna check this, so it should be false. Submit and is priority is false, plus we get the other values and then we go to the homepage. So that my friends is now all working. So hopefully you've got an idea of how we can use these form controls and different form inputs. There's loads more to try out, but it would take me a good 45 minutes to go through all of them. So we'll leave it there. But that's also how we can hook up these different UIs with a form component from React Router DOM. And when we submit the form, it fires that action down here and does something with the data. Okay, if you want to learn more about this kind of stuff, like I said, check out my React Router in-depth course. The link is going to be down below.